Okay, I'll bring that. Hey, well, <laughs> good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition with Coffee with Joe. I'm Joe Osamendi, your host. But if you're a regular that watch this program or if you're a newbie, I want you to know that that's not the most important thing. Most important thing about this show is the guy I'm going to introduce you to right now without any kind of fan for anything else. This is Mr. Paul Hacker. Paul, welcome to Coffee with Joe. Good morning, Joe. How are you? Oh, it's Glad my to be pleasure. Here. My pleasure. And you're a professional liability broker. Yes. So let's start off with what is a professional liability broker? Right. Well, first of all, the company I work for is Access Insurance Services. Okay. A privately held company, 21 years old. What we do is we help professionals, accountants, lawyers, doctors, uh, insurance agents, real estate brokers, meet their need for requirement for errors and emissions or professional mm -hmm. liability. Right. That's the first thing we do. Um, on top of professional liability side of it, there's other lines of business too that we sell that most, most professionals need, directors and officers, if you're a larger company, um, employment practice liability, and then last but not least, cyber insurance or cyber mm -hmm. liability. That's kind of what we do. Right. I, I really want to uh, concentrate on cyber security right now sure. because it's a big thing that people are talking about all the time. Yes. People don't really understand it. Right. So in where it's, where, where it's come and where we are now. So why don't you give us a little history in the cybersecurity field? And perfect, perfect question. So, so cyber, when it first came out, was called privacy network security because every company has data. Your company, RVN, has data on mm -hmm. your customers. Data would be professional identi personal identifying information or uh, PHI, private health information. Mm -hmm. That's like super um, data, data that, that people have. And you have to secure that. And if you don't secure that, you have an issue. The issue is that in more states are doing this now, they're instituting um, penalties. So if you have a breach of data and you don't inform the authorities and, you, and people find out their, their information is out there, their, their identity is taken, credit cards are put in their name, what have you, mm -hmm. you're in deep doo-doo, for okay. lack of a better technical, technical term. But serious. So first and foremost, every company has to protect that data. Right. One of the things that we've seen, um, and four years ago, we started seeing more and more insurance companies getting more involved with cyber insurance. And mm -hmm. back then, it was really easy to get it. Just tell me who you are, give me your website, your revenue, and what you do, mm -hmm. and we'll provide you with insurance, full, full insurance for cyber, that will protect you for data breaches on your end, or um, a ransom event, what have you. And it was cheap. It wasn't expensive at all. Maybe mm -hmm. a five million dollar policy was like four thousand dollars. Okay. All right. So fast forward four years later, COVID hits two or three years ago. Everyone's now working from home, and when COVID hit, there was no security. Right. So okay. there was no virtual private network at home. Mm -hmm. Empl employers didn't really they weren't really geared up to have people working remote remotely. Right. So anyone and their uncle at their home could access the, their network. There was no security on that network. So hackers or cyber criminals had the opportunity to say, you know what, this is great. We can hack into these, these networks really easily, mm -hmm. remotely through RDP, remote desktop protocol, or what have you. Get in there, figure out what's going on, and then start creating uh, campaigns to learn and get more information mm -hmm. called phishing. Right. Not phishing like you know you're phishing, right, yeah. but you're phishing like right. you, know, you know it's called it, it, it's something that the pH. that hackers and cyber criminals do mm -hmm. to, to get information, and it was a free fall. Now because all that has happened, all these claims have ha have happened. You've seen them, whether it's Equifax, Target, right. or even smaller companies. It really caused an issue for the carriers. The carriers cut back, said we're not giving full limits anymore. Mm -hmm. We're not uh, providing all these services anymore. We're sublimiting certain things like social engineering or cyber cr crime, mm -hmm. and really put a, put, a, put a hole in what was going on. Right. So these claims, like ransomware, for example, just to explain what ransomware is. OK, please. So a hacker comes into your network somehow, mm -hmm. usually through an email. 90% of these hacks happen because someone thinks they're, you receive an email from one of your coworkers, here, you think. Right. And they said, look, we need to do wire this money, what have you, and you click on it. Right. Now the hacker's in your system, and they're, 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 they're deploying malware or malicious malwareware. Right. And malware is where now that hacker's in your system doing certain things. Now they can stay there, troll, or they can lock you up. Right. So a ransomware means you're stuck. You can't, your system goes black. And it says, you know, in order to access your system again, you have to call this number and pay this amount of money. Uh -huh. 
couple of years ago, ransoms were maybe ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Some kid in the in the garage was doing hacked into someone. They want some money, what have you? Right, right. Now they have cyber criminal companies around the world. Companies like this, staff, customer service, CFO, what have you, and ransoms are happening more and more. And ransoms, on average, are one million to four million dollars today. Really? Yeah, really. So, so yeah. let's say, for example, you have a your broker sells you an insurance policy for a million bucks. I mean, the limit is a million dollars. Mm -hmm. The asking price for the ransom is a million dollars. You're you're done. You have no more limits left for your for your policy for that year. Okay. Now you pay the ransom. If you have cyber insurance, they have uh, services that, that will negotiate with that hacker. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. try to try to uh, cut that, pre that that limit down or the amount they want from a million to 600,000, what have you. So um, once you pay that ransom, they give you your key, your encryption key to unlock your data again, mm -hmm. if you do it. If you, if you don't do that, so you know what, I have data backup. They've been in your system, they stole the information. They're gonna threaten you and say, look, if you don't pay the ransom, we're taking this information you have, your private, and we're selling it. And then you got a whole different problem. So you don't know where it's going to go. It's going on the dark web. Okay. So dark web, years ago, dark web was set up, believe it or not, back in the day, our government set up a, a system where they could communicate where no one else could see what was going on. Okay. You know, another country, what have you. That dark web has now been taken over, or not taken over, but more hackers and criminals are in there selling data, buying data, and you can't see what they're doing because it's so encrypted and what have you, there's other reasons for it, not to get too technical with it. So um, because of all this stuff, it's just causing a lot of problems out there. Mm -hmm. So, so, but um, anyway, that's, that's kind of what's going on out there. So do you have any questions so far? Yeah, I have a question right now. When, let's say a hacker gets in your system. How long do they stay in the network? In, in our states, they could be in our net, in the network 272 days. Okay. You don't know. So people, they could be in your system and the employer doesn't have certain pr protections or, or security um, tools to find out that, they are in, that they're in your system. Mm -hmm. And when they're in your system, they're trolling, they're investigating, they're finding out who are the key executives, where are your, um, where's your accounting done, mm -hmm. who are your vendors? We, had, uh, we have a lot of real estate customers. So we have a property manager Mm -hmm. who was hacked, that hacker took, knew when the leases were due, recreated, social engineered, mm -hmm. an invoice that looked exactly the same, told the, uh, the, their clients or their renters, or, or, you know what, when you send the money, send it here now. All that money, gone. Wow. So, the, so they had insurance, we intervened, we helped them, we recouped the money, we found out where it all happened. And that's where the beauty of having cyber insurance occurs. You find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. There's data breach coaches that know exactly what to pay for, for all the penalties and things like that. Mm -hmm. They have forensics to now dive into the system, find out the network where it occurred. Is the, are the hard drives damaged? Is your server damaged? If it is, you're gonna get a whole new system. And now with the whole supply chain issue with COVID, you couldn't get them. <laughs> so if you were down, you're down. And because of that, think about it. You're a company, you have customers. Customers say, you know what? I'm gonna go somewhere else now because my information was stolen and now I got all this stuff going on. I changed my banking accounts, my credit card numbers and everything. So you, your reputation takes a big hit as a company if you get hit with, with, a, with a hack. Mm -hmm. Do you remember like, um, there's so there've been so many different hacks out there, but there was a, a shoe company. I forgot the name of the shoe company, and they got hacked. I'm like, you know what? How come I'm not going to buy shoes from that shoe company? Because I'm I was concerned. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's what happens. How I'm, I'm confused at how these hackers get in the system in the first place. How does it happen? It ha you get an email. Mm -hmm. The email looks legitimate. You click on the email. They're in. They're, they they launch language malware. Okay. And once they're in the system, they can do a number of things. Like I said, they can sit there and take a look at more information mm -hmm. for 272 days and find out what they're going to do. Or they can say, you know what, this is a big enough company and I'm going to lock them up and they're going to pay a ransom. Hmm. That's how they get it. 90% of what happens in, the, in this environment is an email 
someone clicks on that looks legitimate. Well, uh, what, what, what do the hackers look for? I, I'm, I'm trying to understand this whole thing. I mean, you know, it, it, they have to look for something to want to get in that network, right? Well, it's what they do is they, it, it's, it's the, um, the rule of numbers. Okay. They're sending millions, millions of these phishing emails across the network, whether it's your company or another company, everywhere. They figure there's a certain percentage of people going to click on it, uh -huh. And then they get all this information in. They're going to determine from a, from a sales prospecting tool, who am I going to go after? Am right. I going to go after RVN or am I going to go after CVS? Right. You know, believe it or not, maybe they don't want to go after CVS. CVS has a whole IT staff. Not that you don't have IT staff here. Right. Huge IT staff, huge budget for all this stuff. They probably have a lot of security protocols in place. Right. Harder to hack into. Maybe they'll hack into RVN and lock them up. Right. You know, so it's not the size of your company, your revenue, that they're going after, they're going after low-hanging fruit. Okay. How can I get in there, get in there, and, and it's a sales cycle. If I get RVN and I get XYZ and I get ABC, right. at the end of the year, I'm making two, three million dollars as a company hmm. because of the ransoms and, and, or, and or I'm selling the data on the dark web. Well, that, that brings up a, a, a question then. Like, for instance, wouldn't it be easier for, 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 for hackers to get in several small companies than to try to hack one large company. Absolutely, absolutely. They do it because smaller companies usually don't have the staff, right, right. the IT um, staff, the, the equipment. They maybe are, are um, being hosted by AWS or another, another big daddy or whatever the name of the, that, that company is. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to get in there, you know? So they can go after the small. So every company is, 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 is free game for a hacker. It's not just the large companies, and that's the fallacy. Oh, we're small, who wants it? us? Well, everyone mm -hmm. wants it. I had, a, I had a customer. They had a ransom event, only $25,000, but mm -hmm. their largest client got freaked out. They're like, we're really big and we're afraid. What if that hacker got from your system to our system? Mm -hmm. That would have been detrimental to their stockholders. Right, right. They terminated their contract. Unfortunately, our client went out of business. Wow. Now, I'm not trying to freak everybody out here or freak you out, but this is the reality of what's happening today. And there's a gentleman here in the state of New Jersey, Mike Garrity. You may want to talk to him about coming on this show sometime. Mm -hmm. He's a real big wig for New Jersey. He runs the whole cybersecurity unit for New Jersey. Okay. And he would tell you stories that would make your head spin. Well how anyway. big? How big is this? How, how, how big? You know, it seems like it's a gigantic industry. It's huge. It's worldwide. In in Europe, they're a little bit ahead of us. They have something called General Data um, Reporting, GDPR, General Reporting Pro Protocol. Basically, they saw what was happening with pri with security mm -hmm. and, and privacy, and they said, "Look, if you're a company in, in the UK and you have customers and you screw up, we're going to beat the crap out of you and make you pay a lot of money." Mm -hmm. So states have taken this GDPR type of mentality or methodology like California and New York. So if you are a company, you have customers in New York and California, you're getting hit with huge fines. Dunkin' Donuts got hit with a 300,000 fine from New York. Really? Yeah, because they weren't, people were, you know those cards you get to get your coffee? Yeah, yeah. And your donuts, what have you? They, they were hacked. And they didn't initially report it, and then they reported it and they found how big it was, and they got hit with a $300,000 fine, just New York. Mm -hmm. And California is even worse. So if you have multiple clients in multiple states, each state could hit a different fine for you. And that's where, when you have a policy, a million dollars a couple years ago was pretty, pretty enough, not enough anymore. We're not trying to upsell you here. You may need a two or three or four or $5 million or a $10 million policy. The problem is, since all these claims have occurred, insurance carriers are cut back. So they'll only offer a $2 million policy. Right. That means we have to go out to access, which is another layer, and build that tower to get you where you have to be um, limit-wise. Well, that, that, that brings up something that I'm thinking about right now. Like you're talking about $1 million, $2 million, $3 million. What happens if you need $20 million or twenty? I mean, is there any limit or any ceiling? Um, there is no ceiling unless you're a larger company. Like we have banks as clients. Right. And they like need, Bank of America, for instance. We don't have them. But if we had them, they, right. their tower for cyber has got to be $100 million to $1 okay. million. Dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. And what, they, what that means is they have those limits, but they're going to have more skin in the game, meaning they're going to have a higher deductible. They may right. have a $100,000 deductible or a $1 million deductible, whatever. Okay. 
that's a lot less than paying 80 million or 20, whatever the number is, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, banks. So the, this is a great, great, great segue here. The areas, the industries that get hit the hardest, mm -hmm. healthcare, right. number one. Sure. PHI, private health information, is very um, lucrative for a hacker. They can sell one medical record for $250 on the dark web. A social security card is a dollar on the dark web. Really? <laughs> yeah. So this is what's going on here. So healthcare number one. Anything finance, banking, insurance, number two. Number three, manufacturing and supply chain. Okay. So, but there was, years ago there was a hack with Maersk. Mm -hmm. They had a ransom event. They couldn't unload their cargo. They were stuck in the harbor or out in the ocean. Kind of like what happened during COVID sure. with supply chain. That, that wasn't a hack. They couldn't unload. They didn't have the staff. Mm -hmm. And it just was, was nuts. But that's kind of what happened. That was four years ago. Well, we're going to take a quick break sure. right now. You're going to make, make a couple of bucks for the company while we're talking insurance. <laughs> and we'll be right back with Paul Hacker. So stick around. Say we've got grit and we'll take it as a compliment because it's our uncommon drive, our spark within, that brings us together and sets us apart. We are temple made. And when others take shortcuts, when others take breaks, when others take the easy way, we take charge. A stroke can be easy to detect. A loved one can't speak, perhaps they can't move. But there's another sign of a stroke that many of us can't see. It's called spatial neglect, and it can occur during or after a stroke, causing distorted visual movements. Fortunately, there's a solution by using optical prism technology during rehabilitation. If you or a loved one have experienced a stroke, ask your doctor about spatial neglect. Spatial neglect. See the whole picture at KesslerFoundation.org. Hello, my name is Robert E. Johnson, legal analyst. I want you to stay tuned in for my new show, Due Process. Due Process is an entitlement that all citizens must be treated equally when dealing with our judicial system and our government. Now, on my show, Due Process, we will cover landmark cases such as Brown versus Board of Education, Wamsung versus United States, Matt versus Ohio. Now, make sure you stay tuned in for my show, Due Process, on RVN Television coming to you soon. Let's face it, lawyers get a bad rap. I'm Erin Bruschi, host of Legal Breakdown, where we dissect legal topics for the Well, welcome once again to Coffee with Joe, this edition from RVN Television, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I'm Joe Osmendi, your host, but I must admit, that once again, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing about this show is the guy I'm going to talk to and introduce you to right now. And that's Paul Hacker. He's a professional uh, liability broker with Access Insurance Services, LLC, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And we're talking today about, about cybersecurity. Yes. Which is a big thing with everybody right now because data is important. Mm -hmm. and, and hacking is important because you can lose a lot of things. Absolutely. So let, let's talk a little bit about um, what is the cost of stolen data in regards to, let's, I'll, I'll pick up three things like credit cards, social security numbers, yep. or maybe, you know, medical data. <coughs> medical data, data, I mentioned before, uh, before it's uh, a, a, a medical record for a hacker is worth $250 per record. Hmm. So Paul Hacker's record is worth $250. Okay. Your work record is $250. Dan, our friend Dan's probably worth 500 because he's got a lot going on there. <laughs> but just kidding. But just but seriously, um, so it, it's health healthcare is number is, is the most expensive. Okay. Credit card maybe five dollars. You can buy uh, databases on 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 the dark web for eighty five dollars of just social security numbers and PII professional death, death information. Um, a social security number car number itself is worth a dollar. So dollar. a dollar, because what do you need with social security number, you know? The key is medical, I can take that data and I could um, leverage that person, depending on what's on that medical record. Um, I can leverage the company who had that data, because if, if it's that involved, 
there is a big liability with that one, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but they're going to sell that stuff. They're going to get your records and they're going to sell on the dark web to another company who could do more things to you, to you on that. So there is a, this is a big business. You don't really see a lot of it in the news, like the companies that are actually doing it. You may hear names of hacker organizations. It's not just Russia or Ukraine or China. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. And there are certain hackers here in the States that are in turn, that work for companies that have stolen, stolen things. Capital One was a perfect example of this, where mm -hmm. the employee took all that, all that information and all that, all that data. You know? So it's, it's rampant. It's everywhere. Well, you know, you, we talk, we're talking about a couple things. First of all, gigantic companies, like a, like a big medical facility, a health organization, mm -hmm. or a bank, or something like that. But how about the individual? How does an individual protect himself against a hacker? Well, see, I, we don't get really involved on, on the individual side, but you can, you can get through um, um, your antivirus software okay. company. They mm -hmm. do sell identity uh, protection, identity theft protection you can get for that. That's important. Okay. I think it's ID something, but, but on top of that, so individuals can protect themselves okay. by doing that. It's not that expensive, and I would encourage you to do that. Or, and or I have, um, I use a company, and they monitor my credit. Mm -hmm. So they tell me if someone's trying to take something or... Yeah, like life lack and stuff like that. That's it, basically, mm -hmm. yeah. So I have that, and um, that helps me keep a track of what's going on with my, with my credit. Because sometimes you have people come in and trying to take a credit card from you, try, sure. to, try to uh, put a, a charge on that, they let you know that, you know? Um, so, I, But they, individuals, individuals can, can do that. Um, I think all companies should consider talking to their brokers, because they, they, they use their brokers for workers' comp and, mm -hmm. and, and property and auto. Talk to your brokers about cybersecurity, cyber insurance. It's, it, for a small company, it's not crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. It could run you if you know. It, it's based upon revenue, how many records you have. Um, but with the competitors that are out there today, you can probably get a one million dollar policy or a five hundred thousand dollar policy for about a thousand bucks a year. Mm. So that's a small company. Yeah. Okay. And as you get larger, and if you had a situation where you had a hack or, or, or data loss, that's a ding against you. It's, it's going to be more expensive than that. But we have customers that are as small as a you know, one man or a one woman, woman shop where we insure them on their cyber for about a thousand bucks a, a year. Excuse me. And, I have, and we have customers that are humongous. Um, very large organizations, maybe they make a billion dollars in revenue a year, and that cyber is, at, I, I can't even tell you the number, it's, it's way high, mm -hmm. you know? But we, we, we cover the full gamut there. But I would say for New Jersey, most of our companies are in the uh, one, the 25 million, maybe 100 million dollar range. And again, the more revenue you have and the more records you have, the higher the premium is going to be. Sure. Plus the industry. My manufacturers, my carriers <coughs> are going to put a higher de deductible on that policy because mm -hmm. they, they know and they're going to lower the social engineering or cyber crime because those are the areas that are getting hit pretty hard. They limit their exposure, you know. Mm -hmm. But there are other ways you would increase that by getting another carrier on top of that um, or another policy on top of it to increase that social engineering piece of it. But so I would say your low end is a thousand dollars a year. You're high end if you're if you're a twenty five million dollar company. We just, I just wrote one with one of my brokers in Wisconsin, and that was ten thousand dollars a year. But they made they made seventy million dollars a year selling right. farm equipment. Mm -hmm. So for them, they needed that, and they had. Now, I think another part, important thing to understand is that just because you want the insurance doesn't mean you're going to get it. Okay. Because the carriers are looking at okay, years ago it was easy. Now we want to make sure you have certain controls in place. Multi-factor authentication is the number one. You know when you go to your bank, you're online, mm -hmm. but before you access your account, you get a code sent to your cell phone, right, you right. plug that number, that's multi-factor authentication. Mm -hmm. If you have multi-factor authentication, you won't have to worry about having a hacker trying to steal. If they get your credentials, they can only go so far. They can't get, in, they can't get into the castle. You know? mm -hmm. They can get to the front of the castle, but they can't get in without that, without that code. So um, that's number one. Number two, carriers are making, making sure you have data encrypted at rest. Mm -hmm. If it's just sitting there, they can get in there and take it. If it's encrypted, they can't get to it. Okay. Third thing they want you to know is that you've got a protocol in place to educate your employees. Okay. Because 
if the employee knows, oh, this email looks suspicious, or before I wire that $25,000 out to the client, maybe I should call that bank to make sure it's, it, it's there. And that's important. Not only one time a year, but multiple times a year, educate, mm -hmm. and then have a system in place to look at that information there. So, is, yeah. is there an average claim? An average claim? Yeah. I think the average claim in ransomware today for a, a mid-sized company is 200 grand. 200 grand, wow. 200 grand, right. If you're larger, it could be, it could be higher than that. Wow. Yeah, it, so it's devastating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I never knew it, how big this was. It's huge. It is huge, and it's probably getting bigger. It's bigger like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't say that. But well, I know. <laughs> but, yeah, Paul, this has been fascinating. Yes. I, it, 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 we're, at the pro, we're at the time right now in my, in my program where I'm going to ask you to look in this camera right here okay. and actually tell people who should call you, what organization should call you, right. and how they can get a hold of you. Uh, any any organizations who's concerned about cyber insurance or cyber security should give me a, a buzz. My, uh, my name is again Paul Hacker. I work for Access Insurance Services. My phone number is 201-847-9175, extension 117. Uh, or you can catch me on LinkedIn, or you can catch me um, um, on, on my cell phone, which is 845-800-4552. All right. Paul Hacker, thank you so much Hacker. for being on my show. Joe, yeah, pleasure. Hacker, thank I mean, you. I couldn't make that up. I, 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 I'm, your probably name is Real Smith. You probably just no, it no. My, my actually, my owner is Mike Smith, but I'm Paul Hacker. Okay. Terrible at golf and uh, great at cybersecurity, cyber insurance. Good. And thank you so much. Thank Paul. you. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us on this edition with Coffee at Joe. I'll see you next week. And uh, be kind to each other. And if you are a company, really take notice of how you can protect yourself against cybersecurity.